Hi guys, Dean McHenry here from Santiago Archery, and this is part two of how to choose the correct recurve bow for you. So in the first part, we just looked at the comparison between a club or training type bow and a full modern recurve bow. So now what we want to talk about is how do you know exactly what riser and limbs to purchase. So I'm going to presume that you've now chosen to go the modern recurve route because that's really what we specialize in and really ideally everybody needs to be going that route at some point. So you've decided you want to shoot modern recurve equipment or you want to buy that equipment. How do you choose the right riser and limbs based on brands, weight, specifications, materials, those types of things. So that's what I want to get into. So the first thing that we really need to understand is a term called ILF. Now ILF basically means international limb fit. So I'm going to demonstrate that again. I've showed you this before a few times in the videos, but basically how these limbs go into the modern recurve bows is that they have a sort of dovetail slot at the bottom here, and then right at the tip over here, they've got an opening in the limb that then goes onto the tiller bolt. So it's a fairly simple mechanism in how it clips in and out of the bow. So you don't need to screw anything in, it just pops in and out of position. Okay, so that's very convenient. But international limb fit or ILF basically refers to this geometry and these tolerances and measurements. So what that means is that you should be able to mix and match between brands as far as riser and limb combination is concerned. So for instance, this is a South African made gray archery riser, and these are Korean made MK limbs, but they fit absolutely perfectly. So that standard is for almost all new risers and limbs, except for maybe one model, and that is what we call a formula riser. Now Hoyt makes formula risers and formula limbs, and effectively the mechanism is exactly the same. The only difference is that the length between the tip of the limb and the dovetail is quite a bit longer. So what that means is that this standard ILF riser will not be able to take formula limbs. So that's a consideration on its own. If you want to shoot formula, you must have a formula riser and a formula set of limbs. But the, the majority of risers and limbs are in the standard ILF range. Now, what that means is technically, you should be able to take any brand of limb, any brand of riser, and mix and match and use those without any problems. But in practical reality, that's not actually the case. So very often you can get slight tolerance differences in um, how they manufacture the riser and the limbs, and you can have slight issues with fit. They don't always fit perfectly. They're sometimes a little bit too tight, a little bit too loose. So really the safest bet is to try and stick to the same brand between riser and limbs, or otherwise making sure that you're getting a high quality riser and limb combination from a very reputable brand. So a lot of shops, online shops, will have a warning about mixing and matching and they won't take responsibility if you mix and match brands between risers and limbs. So really, like I say, the safest route really is to just make sure you get the same brand and then you've got a good leg to stand on if there's any issue with the way the limbs fit in the riser. Okay, so that's international limb fit, and you need to just make sure that whatever you do, you make sure that your riser is an international limb fitting riser, and your limbs are ILF limbs as well. Okay, the next thing we want to talk about is brands. Now, brands is a very tricky question to answer because a lot of it is based on opinion, but my advice as far as brands are concerned is that there are a lot of competitive, really good brands out there, and so what you want to go for is just reputable brands. Brands that you know or have heard of in the industry, your big brands like Hoyt, which is an American manufacturer. Win and Win is probably the next biggest manufacturer. Then you've got brands like MK, which the limbs that I've got over here are MK, fantastic quality. Um, then there's a few European brands, brands like Maibo and Spigarelli. There's some really, really good brands out there. And that's kind of the only advice I can really give you as far as brands is concerned is to just make sure you go for something you know, something that um, the industry knows well, just so you can make sure that you're gonna have that good client service if you have an issue with the product, or there's a warranty claim or something along those lines. Okay. Um, then as far as brands are concerned, one of the brands that we recommend a lot for risers and limbs is actually a brand called Winners or WNS. Now Winners is actually Win and Win's sort of sister brand. So they make their 
let's say more budget-friendly intermediate equipment under the winners or WNS brand. Now, though that means that you're getting win and win quality and win and win customer service and uh, warranty claims, but you're getting it under a cheaper sister brand. So that's a really, really good place to go in. And a lot of our guys end up buying winners, risers and limbs when they buy their first bow. If you've bought one of those and then now you're looking at upgrading, I would suggest them going full win and win or Hoyt or one of the big flagship brands. But there's some really good options as far as your intermediate brands are concerned, like winners. Now, the other thing that is really important to understand is materials. So, like I've said before, this is an aluminium, machined aluminium riser. Now, these are probably the most common riser you're going to find and that's just because it's a slightly older way of making risers it's a tried and tested method and it just works really well very accurately manufactured and then what they do is they anodize finish it so you get this really robust strong beautiful finish on the riser so that is probably your best bet as far as getting a high performance recurve riser um, it's going to just last really long. It's accurately manufactured. It can take a lot of um, poundage and energy through the riser, but there are other alternatives. So when we're talking about the sort of metal aluminium risers, you can also get what we call a forged riser. Now forged is just a different way of making the riser as opposed to CNC milling it out of a, a block of aluminium. They forge the riser and then sometimes CNC finish it. So the quality of finish is still exceptionally good and they can also anodize those risers. So that is sort of your next best as far as an aluminium riser is concerned. Not quite as good, but there's a lot of cost saving in the process of making them. And so you can end up saving quite a bit of money and still getting a very good international lymphoid riser. Then a sort of step below that is what we call a die cast riser. Now die cast risers are probably to be avoided if you can, unless you're budget restricted and you still want an ILF riser. Die cast as a process of making risers is nowhere near as accurate as forging or CNC machining. And so that's really where you're gonna get maybe let down a little bit is that quality of, of or accuracy of manufacture. Generally speaking, those risers can't handle the same kind of energy. So if you're gonna be shooting high poundage, I would really steer clear of die cast risers as much as possible. You're also unlikely to get an anodized finish on a riser that's been die cast manufactured. So you're going to get a painted finish or a sprayed finish. And so it's just not going to be quite as good. It's not going to last as long. You're going to get chips and dings in that riser a lot quicker. So as far as the material is concerned, aluminium is a fantastic option. CNC machine if you can go that route. And I really, really recommend getting an anodized riser if you can, just for that longevity. They look way better. They last longer. They take strain and wear and tear a lot better than a painted riser okay then your other option is actually a carbon fiber riser now carbon fiber risers are a little bit newer than aluminium risers um, but brands like win and win have been making carbon fiber risers for quite a long time now and they are also fantastic options brands like hoyt have stuck to their guns and they're going pretty much only aluminium risers and so um yeah, there's really not a huge difference in terms of performance. Right up at the top of the game, Olympics, World Championships, you're going to see carbon and aluminium risers um, between all of the arches. No difference in performance. You, yeah, there's no, there's no overall difference in performance. Really what it comes down to is shooting feel. How does the bow feel to shoot? And that really is personal preference. So it's very difficult to give advice to say a carbon or an aluminium riser is better. Really, you need to get behind one, shoot one, try one out and get a better feel for that. So I prefer aluminium risers myself, and that's just because I feel like they're a little bit more solid. Um, they have like a more, a little bit more feedback maybe from the riser. Carbon fiber risers have a little bit of like a softer, more dampened feel, and a lot of people really like that. So yeah, personal preference as far as material is concerned. What I can say though about carbon risers is that Carbon is difficult to manufacture accurately. Aluminium, generally speaking, is easier to manufacture with very small tolerances. So what I would suggest is don't go for a cheap carbon riser if you're going to go the carbon route. So make sure that you're going again for a reputable brand like Win & Win, maybe not going for their sort of intermediate range carbon risers, but making sure that you go for a really high quality riser and then you're going to get that accuracy in manufacture that you want and you get the carbon riser and feel. 
Keep in mind though that you would think maybe the carbon fiber is going to be a lot lighter, but that's not necessarily the case. Carbon fiber risers don't generally have these, these cutouts in the riser, so it's usually a fully molded um, riser, and so the actual weight of the riser is not much different. You're going to pretty much be in the same weight with a flagship carbon or aluminium riser. So there isn't really a weight saving thing with carbon risers. Whereas aluminium risers, you do actually get some where they cut more material away around the limb pockets and you can actually end up getting a lighter riser in the aluminium route than generally speaking in the carbon. So the weight of a riser is a different factor. So let's get onto that now. So you've decided you rather want to go aluminium or carbon. You need to be aware of that physical weight. Now I've touched on this a couple of times, but basically one of these flagship aluminium risers is going to probably weigh about 1.2, 1.3 kilograms. Now that's not a lot of weight, but when you start packing and adding accessories onto it, you can get a very heavy bow very quickly. And that catches people off guard um, quite often when they switch maybe from like a club bow onto a full modern recurve bow. So, like I said again, with the, the sort of more intermediate brands, things like Winners, which is part of Win and Win, they make some really fantastic intermediate risers that are a little bit lighter. So I can maybe put one or two of those um, as a, a link in the description below so you can go and take a look. But you can get a riser more around the 1kg, 1100 grams, sometimes even 800, 900 grams for a riser, which shaves a lot of weight off your overall system. Those are great for youngsters and archers that are just stepping up onto modern recurve equipment. So that is a big factor to think about as well. There is some logic to say, just spend as much money as you can on a riser, go get the best you can get, it's gonna last you the longest. But generally speaking, your flagship best top quality risers are quite heavy. So it's sometimes worth doing a little bit of a stepping stone, going from like a club type bow to an intermediate bow that's a little bit heavier than a club bow, but not as heavy as the top, and then shoot that for a couple of years. And then when you're ready, upgrade and go for a full flagship type riser. Okay, so that's also gonna depend on kind of how you're progressing the sport, how often you're gonna shoot, how strong you are. Those kinds of things are gonna play into deciding what weight riser you're gonna go for, and of course the quality of the riser. So, like I said, there is logic to going and just going for a top end riser, and a lot of people will just recommend going for the most expensive riser you can possibly get. Now, I can get behind that logic to a certain degree, except when it comes to the weight factor. But if that isn't an issue, the logic is sound. Spend as much money as you can on the riser. And the reason for that is because the riser is effectively your bicycle frame equivalent and everything else is gonna bolt onto the riser. The limbs, however, it is not necessary to go and spend a huge amount of money on your limbs, especially if you're buying for the first time. And the reason for that is that you don't wanna be making big jumps in poundage as you move through and upgrade your equipment. So your first set of limbs are unlikely to be the limbs that you're going to end up shooting long-term competitively. So don't worry about getting anything more than an intermediate type limb, even the very entry level ILF limbs will do the trick, get you competing, get you into the space, and then from there you can then decide, okay, I wanna go up another two, four, six pounds, I wanna now, then you spend the money and you get yourself a higher quality, higher performing limb. Okay, so it's worth quickly just touching on limb quality. So like I said, you don't necessarily need to be putting as much money into the limbs as you would into the riser for your first bow, but if you want to, if you have the budget, it's worth understanding what a high performance limb actually is. So why would you spend more money on high performance limbs? So the first thing is really is if limb efficiency. So your basic entry level ILF limbs are gonna be mostly wood with a little bit of fiberglass, and then as they add other materials, things like foam and carbon fiber, and the more carbon fiber you have in the limb, generally speaking, the lighter and faster that limb is going to be. So a 30 pound limb across any range, any brand, any quality level is still gonna be a 30 pound limb. So that means is how much uh, tension is gonna be at full draw, okay? So it doesn't matter what limb you get, you're gonna get a 30 pound limb. But how much of that energy manages to make its way back into the bow and into the arrow to send it to the target is kind of your performance efficiency. So you can have a faster, more effective, high performance 30 pound limb, and you can have a heavier, slower 30 pound limb. So that's probably the biggest factor. The next thing is actually how accurately they manufacture that limb. So the profile of a limb is generally going to be the same across 
almost all of the limbs, but you might find that things like where your string sits in the top of the limb, that's not always perfectly symmetrical on some of the cheaper limbs. Same thing with where this um, bolt is sitting in the limb and the groove that's cut out on the end is not always perfectly symmetrical. So your high-end limbs are going to be very accurately manufactured and the overall finish of the limb is going to be that much better. So that's really what we're talking about when we talk about a high-performance limb. Some of them actually have different profiles that allow you to get a sort of smoother, more comfortable draw and that can also increase the overall efficiency and speed of the limb. So, but like I said, if you're looking at your first bow, just go for a standard beginner or intermediate limb and then shoot that for a little while and then when you're ready to really upgrade into a higher poundage range that you're going to compete in, then you just go for a nice high performance limb. Okay, so again, I think I've covered all of the considerations that you need to be taking into account when you're trying to establish what model and brand of riser and limbs to go for. Now the next big thing which is quite a complicated and can be a little bit of a confusing topic is figuring out what is the correct specification as far as length and poundage with riser and limbs. So I'm going to do that in the next part of the next video lesson but for now please subscribe, please like the video and of course share it and if anything didn't make any sense as always please just drop your questions in the comments below or contact me directly and I'll see if I can answer and clarify. Thank you so much guys, check you in the next video.